Hi everybody, welcome back to the Online Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. We just finished Revelation chapter one, and if you missed that, you can go back and watch the previous lessons. We're gonna start right now in Revelation chapter two. This is uh, the first of the letters that Jesus is dictating to the seven churches, and this is a letter to Ephesus. Revelation 2 starts, to the angel of the church in Ephesus write, the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. So we already know who is speaking, right? This is Jesus. And it begins just like any other formal letter. There's a to and a from, right? We know that John is writing the book of Revelation, but this letter is not from John, right? This is from Jesus. And one of the reasons why we typically shy away from reading Revelation is because we think it's filled with all of this weird symbolism or this imagery that we don't understand. Why is Jesus holding stars? Why is he standing among lampstands? Well, we covered that in Revelation chapter 1. The lampstands are the churches. They are all the churches of the world, or at least the ones we're writing to right now. And the stars that Jesus holds, he explains, are the angels that watch over these churches. It's just Jesus' way of saying that he is with us, that he is close by, that he is near, that he walks among us. He is, he is that close, right? He is that close that he walks amongst us. And that would be consistent with what we read in the Gospels. Matthew 18, Jesus says, for where two or three are gathered, in my name, there I am among them. Which means Jesus is with us right now, right? Even as we watch this video, he has full knowledge of what we do in our day because he is that close. Verse two shows us that. It says, I know your works, your toil, your patient endurance. So not only is he nearby, Right? Not only is he close, not only does he walk among us, but he has complete knowledge of us, complete knowledge of all that we do. Verse 2 says, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not, and have found them to be false. I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my namesake, and you have not grown weary. Wow, that sounds like a great church, doesn't it? Jesus sees all these good things in them. He sees all their hard work. And Jesus says, this church actually grows tired from serving. This church is not a bunch of lazy slackers. And this would look good on a, on a job evaluation, right? You don't, want, you don't want your manager to ever say, you know, Bob, you're always asleep in the copy room, right? You know, you're always standing around talking. Your productivity is really low. These people in Ephesus, they serve. Jesus says, you serve even when it's hard. You serve even when it's inconvenient. You serve even when you're busy. And in addition to that, there's another thing. Did you see it? The church is praised for not tolerating false beliefs. And they, they will call out other members who don't walk the walk. This church isn't afraid to lose a few members if they're not spiritually mature. This church has even put false disciples through the ringer. People who claimed to be sent from God and the church of Ephesus didn't take them at face value but tested them. So they don't just listen to their pastor sermons. They don't they go home and they read it for themselves. And, and please, you know, any church that you attend or any pastor that you listen to online, do the same, right? Don't just take someone's word for it. Test. Test your teachers. They are imperfect. I'm imperfect. I'm human, right? I, I will get things wrong. So just to recap, the church in Ephesus, they work hard. They love holiness. Verse 6. Yet... This you have, 
you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. All right, I guess that's more good news, but who are the Nicolaitans? Well, in the book of Acts, there's a guy that's appointed, Nicholas of Antioch, and he is hired to take care of widows and orphans. But what happened was he stayed with them for only a short amount of time, and then he left to go do his own thing. He actually left to go start his own church, his own belief. So it'd be kind of like you had a business partner, and you start off together, and you guys are like together, you're like in it, you're thick as thieves, and then he turns around and stabs you in the back. He goes off and he starts a competitive company all by himself, and he, and he leaves you. So here's a guy who was appointed as an apostle, and then he just goes off and does his own thing. And Jesus says, thank you for not taking that guy at face value. Jesus says, you looked into him, you looked into his teaching, and you didn't support what he was doing. You recognized that he was not on our team. Good job. And you know, more and more, our world is changing, right? This world that we grew up in where Somebody might come over and knock on your door and say, can so-and-so come out and play? And you'd run out into the street and play Nerf football or ride your bikes or play, uh, I don't know, just tag, right? Or play jump rope in the street and just stay out all day until the street lights went on. We live in a world that now is starting to allow more and more right? We allow more and more. And we accept more and more. Every day our world grows more tolerant. And it's all under the banner of inclusivity. It's all under the banner of solidarity. And for the most part, that's a good thing. It is. It's a good thing. But with tolerance comes a loss of conviction. Sometimes lines are drawn because of ignorance. Sometimes lines are drawn because of hate, but sometimes lines are drawn for protection. Sometimes lines are drawn for safety. And when you erase all the lines, you end up opening yourself up to be hurt. You know what? I think as more lines are erased, we're gonna lose just as much as we gain. This church in Ephesus was standing their ground against the popular belief of their day. And Jesus says, good job. Good job for studying and for not giving in. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.